Welcome to Dangerous Prototypes. I'm Ian. Last week we talked a little bit about the Bus Blaster version 4 JTAG debugger. Today we're going to solder that board. But first, we wanted to give a shout out to Texas Instruments. Earlier this week they won the Worst Contest Rules Award by forcing you to give over all your intellectual property and all ownership of the design and even your enjoyment and moral rights in it just to enter their contest, uh, and that's TI India. And today we're going to give them the Biggest Box Award. They sent us this Zigbee development kit, totally inexplicably. Nobody told us it was coming, we didn't ask for it, there was no arrangement, it just showed up on our doorstep. A little tiny box like that. We did of course shift in this giant box. So congratulations TI, you get the biggest box award today. Bus Blaster 2 is a JTAG debugger. That means they can program ARM processors, uh, certain types of flash memory, CPLDs, uh, programmable logic chips, field programmable gatorades, all sorts of stuff like that. Because there's lots of open source uh, JTAG applications out there like OpenOCD for ARM chips mostly and also some uh, different processors. And there's also URJTAG which is primarily for programming logic like field programmable gatorades and CPLDs. So there's lots of open source software out for this and while there's lots of open source programmers people have made, there wasn't really anything mainstream and that was for sale. SparkFun had one from Olimex. It's not open source, but it was about $70 at the time, I think. And we thought we could do much better and make a $30 to $40 JTAG debugger. And that's when we came out with the Bus Blaster. So the first version took us over a year to develop, and we learned a lot about uh, the circuits and JTAG debugging in that time. See, if you look at it, uh, this is a FT2232 chip that's a USB to serial converter chip. It's got two JTAG debugging units on it, so it can actually debug two JTAG targets. Uh, we've got some buffer chips here, and these five buffer chips convert between a target chip at uh, 1.2 to about 3.3 volts to the 3.3 volts used by the FT2232. So in version one, we use discrete logic, so we've got five different chips. But those are actually really expensive. Some of them are quite specialty, and uh, the, the whole chip count, I think, cost about uh, $10 in uh, you know, low quantities. In hardware version 2.5, we replaced all those discrete buffer chips with a CPLD, a programmable logic chip. Now this does the translation between 1.2 volts on the target side and 3.3 volts and the 3.3 volts used by the FT2232. The nice thing about the FT2232H chip that we used is it has two JTAG debugging channels. And since the CPLD is also programmed by JTAG, we connected the second channel up to the CPLD. And now we can change the buffer programmed into the CPLD on the fly just by uploading a new image uh, over USB. That means we can imitate lots of different manufacturers, programmers, and lots of different open source programmer types. So it works with a whole bunch of different software where a fixed programmer like the version 1 wouldn't necessarily work. The biggest downside of the 2.5 is that we've got the header on one side and the USB jack on the edge. We'd like it a lot better if it were symmetrical. So in the version 2.5 update, that's just what we've done. We've uh, got the USB over here opposite the jack. And this will be a lot easier to put in a case and look a lot cooler once we do. The version 2 and 2.5 have supported just about every sort of JTAG debugger that's out there. We've got an image for JTAG key, we've got an image for KT link. But recently there's a new JTAG protocol that only uses two wires or three wires for debug. That's a big improvement over the old protocol which used up to 10. So with the new protocol, we actually need that secondary uh, JTAG link to do some extra functions to support the new protocol. Now the problem is on the version 2, we've got that connected up to the CPLD for programming. So to get around that, we came out with version 4. And that adds uh, a 100 pin CPLD and some circuitry to switch those pins on and off. So in one mode, the, the FT2232 can program the CPLD and when we flip the jumper, then those pins can actually be used as part of the JTAG debugging circuit. That means we can support the full features of the new uh, reduced wire JTAG debugging protocol. Well, our stupid rendering software crashes after that last scene every time. So we have to cut it here and this will be the first half. It was supposed to go out on Tuesday, uh, but now we'll post it on Wednesday. And then tomorrow we'll bring you the second half of the time-lapse soldering video. Sorry about that. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.